Hi, my name's Wendy, and I'm here to talk to you about losing weight. I think all of us at some stage in our life who've had trouble eating, and not eating, um, have had trouble losing weight. And I'm going to speak to you today about what it is from an energetic point of view. I'm not a doctor. Um, I work with energy. So I'm just going to give you my observations of why people don't lose weight, can't lose weight, and what you can do about it. So the first thing I observed with people who have problem losing weight is that they actually have an eating block, like it's an energetic block. Um, it could be emotions, it could be trauma. Sometimes it's from abuse. And this eating block is usually located in the solar plexus, in that chakra, and the chakra is one of the seven chakras in the front of the body. You may know about it. If you don't, you can Google it. So it's just where your stomach is basically between your belly button and at the bottom of your ribs. And everyone I checked had this block here. Now, the block can be small, uh, your eating block, or it can be massive. And what was really interesting, the correlation between people who had very big weight issues had a huge block, and then people who just struggled a bit couldn't quite get down to their perfect or their what they thought was their perfect weight had a smaller block so this block sits there and it's usually created by some kind of stress in your life often it's a protective measure a way to cope and you mustn't be hard on yourself because you wouldn't even know that you put the block there it was done uh, when you were under some kind of uh, trauma or something bad happened to you or you're dealing with someone who's really difficult, you might just put the block up. Now, these blocks can be all different emotions. Uh, it can be anger, hate, resentment. Uh, it can be fear. Fear's a big block. Um, terror and trauma. And even with some people, it can just be from loss or rejection. So abuse is very powerful um, in our world all different sorts of abuse and that will also help to set up the block so if you've had emotional abuse from your parents or with a partner who was emotionally abusive or verbally abusive this will often set up a block particularly if people have been rude about your weight or made fun of you the block will even get bigger so the block sits here we don't know it's there <laughs> so we're really hard on ourselves and we think they're you know, we're losers because we can't lose weight and we're weak-willed and we, we lose weight and then we put it back on. And the reason we put it back on is because the block is actually still there. So it's not your fault. So this is why I'm doing this podcast because I want people to understand what is happening around their body so that then they can do some, use some tools or do some procedures to try and get rid of the block. Sometimes you will know when the block happened. Some people are very intuitive and they will know it started at a certain age. Uh, other times we have no idea when it first started. It could have been that first time when someone said, oh, you're fat or whatever, and you weren't that fat. <laughs> they were just mean. Um, and then you form the block and it gets bigger and bigger. The way I see it is that if we can release the block and the emotions that are attached to that block, then our eating could come back to a more normal place for us. It doesn't mean we won't still enjoy food, but the I out of control eating six chocolate biscuits and you can't even feel them touch the sides when you eat them, that could go and you could not, your need to uh, eat when you're upset, stressed, angry, that will lessen. So this is what we're talking about today. So... The way to get rid of it is first, obviously, to recognise you have a block there. With people who are eating too much, the block is in the solar plexus where the stomach is. I found that with people who have trouble to eat when they're upset, the block's in the throat. I've had both blocks. <laughs> so I, when I was younger, I had the one in my solar plexus. I managed to work on that, but then I landed up after my husband died. I landed up with one in my throat, which has been really annoying to get rid of when I keep working on it and it's getting better but that's where the two blocks are so you have to work out first of all how you what will work for you to get rid of it so for me I use my mind and meditated and 
also remove the block like that way, like let it go, just keep letting go of the eating block, let it go. I then used emotional freedom tapping. You can find that on Google everywhere and learn how to do that. And when you tap, you use the affirmation, um, you know, place of love for myself or however you want to say it. Then you go, I want to let go of the emotional or eating block that I have in my solar plexus. I want to release it and let it go. And you might have to tap on that every day for a while for you know, a few minutes. The other way I use is I actually tap on that area. I like to do a tapping motion just in front of where my stomach is and like hit it, keep hit or not hit my actual physical stomach, just hit outside the stomach, just hitting it, letting it go, letting it go. Another way is to, if you can do it, you can hypnotise yourself down by counting down from 10 down to 9, going deeper and deeper to your subconscious and tell yourself you're letting go of the block. That is very powerful, actually, if you can do that. You can make your own tape so you talk yourself down so you don't have to concentrate on one doing it and then um, saying it and then doing it. So it's actually not a bad way to do it. You can do that. The other way is you can go to a healer or um, someone who does Reiki and you can Reiki yourself too and you can put your hands there and mentally and emotionally let go of that block. And sometimes when you do these um, tools, procedures, whatever you want to call them, when you do them you can actually feel it release and you can actually, sometimes you cry and sometimes tears come out your eyes and sometimes you do a lot of uh, breathing, I do quite a bit of sighing and yawning and that's a release the body's doing because the body doesn't like blocks around it because it interrupts the flow of the working of the body. So it's actually, uh, ultimately, it's not a good thing for the body. It's like having a big piece of cement there and things can't get around it. I also use a pendulum um, because that's one of my tools. So I if you are good with a pendulum, you can take your pendulum and you can release it using your pendulum, either straight on your body or I use it on my hand, do it absently. And the other one that I find really useful is I use kinesiology. So I actually use that to check if I have a block, then I do the work and then I come back and check if the block's gone. I really believe that we can heal ourselves and I think that our society is very condemning of people who are overweight and they don't realize that it's protection it's an energy protection yes we might have a predisposition because our mum might be plump or something but she was probably just doing exactly the same thing that you're doing now but it can be lifted out when you do this work you need to be patient it's not going to be like overnight sensation you might be lucky and be one of those people who can just manifest quickly but if you're not, you might just have to keep hammering away. When you get into your little crazy eating thing and you're watching yourself and being mad at yourself, don't be hard. Just go, okay, I need to do a little bit more work on that. The block's still there. The block can also kind of come back if you land up in a very stressful situation for you or you're scared about something or you are having to be with people who are for you difficult to be around and toxic and you find find your block comes up and soon after you've seen them you're eating two packets of chips and four sandwiches so don't be hard that's a really good thing because you just watch yourself and go okay this is what I'm doing this is how I'm feeling I've done this podcast because I was shown by my guidance where the blocks are I think we more with more knowledge can help ourselves and then I think once we start shifting out the blocks it's actually easier to eat healthily I think we sabotage ourselves when we have blocks we know we're supposed to have you know five vegetables and two pieces of fruit and lots of water and etc but we just go and you know, have a packet of chips or eat rubbish and I think that's the block speaking I actually really think that's not your fault it really is the block speaking so once you get your head around the fact that you have an eating block and start working on it, it's a very productive and proactive thing to do. It also makes you understand yourself and also understand other people. 
Um, this is why people yo-yo, because the block's still there. They go and lose 10 kilos and then it all just comes back up when they're not looking, so to speak. But once you remove the block, it's better. And the last thing you can do too is the visualisation, which I think is powerful, where you see the block. Um, I, when I was doing it, I could see it was like, um, to me it was like a big thing of cement, like a huge, like, square cement thing stuck there where my stomach was supposed to be. Um, and I kind of saw it coming off and out of the aura and releasing. At first it was very dark. Um, every time I went back and did it, it was lighter and lighter and actually got smaller. So that's a very powerful meditation that you can do. So I hope that you have some success with this. Um, I had success with it. And uh, I don't have that incredible need to eat when things are going wrong or I would eat when to celebrate and I would eat when it was upset and I would eat when it was just ordinary day. So even though I wasn't um, classified as having an eating disorder or anything, um, I really struggled with my weight to keep it down all the time. It was never easy. And once I removed the block, it wasn't like a big deal. I didn't have it. And every now and then if I do find myself doing it, I realise that the block's probably gone but the behaviour's still there because that's what you might need to look at, that you might need to change some of your behaviours. So I would um, comfort myself with food if I was upset or even angry and I would reward myself with food. So I actually did some substitution where instead of going eating, I'd get on the internet and buy myself something or someone. I love buy them something or I'd go to the plant shop and I actually started to treat myself in non-food ways and that actually helped quite a lot because I was still treating and nurturing myself and comforting myself but I wasn't using the food to do it. I hope this all helps you. I hope you have success and uh, just remember to love yourself. You did this because it was a way to cope and that was a good idea but now you need to do it differently. I send love and light to you. Goodbye.